Okay guys, today in our adventure in quarantine, we're gonna do some virtual reality flight simming. And we're gonna be using the module DCS, which is Digital Combat Simulator. And uh, I've got a pretty cool little setup here. As you can see, I've got a flight stick that's modeled after the A-10 Warthog flight stick and a throttle that uh, has all the buttons and knobs and dials you'd ever want. So. Uh, it took me a long time to learn how to actually do all of the subsystems and weapon systems to get this thing off the ground, so hopefully um, I remember how to do all of it. It's been a while, and uh, you can come along with me. All right, let's have a good time. Okay, today we're going to do some VR A-10 Warthog. We're going to fly this tank around and uh, kill some bad guys and got a whole campaign set up here so let's see we got russia and china have formed a geostrategic axis to manipulate the price of oil and erode the primacy of u.s dollars the global reserve currency yada 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 bunch of politics i don't care u.s con decided to establish the beachhead in the nation of georgia okay in an attempt to stop us from establishing our forces in the region russia has begun making incursions across the georgian border Part of a small NATO contingent. All right, we're going to Batumi with the goal of pushing back hostile forces. We can spearhead this effort. Okay, let's go get in a currency war. <clears throat> now that's the A-10 Warthog right there, and this is our briefing. Uh, we have weapons loaded. Allow 88 AGM 65Hs. I don't like those. Let's go ahead and switch up our weapon profile just a little bit. Those low 88s are not as fun and the AGM 65H's don't have quite the range that I like when we're going up against what will probably be a lot of anti-aircraft. So here's our map. That's the uh, airport we're going to be taking off from. Batumi in the nation of Georgia. And up here looks like the front line. So we're going to take off, make a hard right turn, get ourselves in the fray, and I am hitting this command and control unit, HQ, units rather, back there, right behind the enemy front line. And it looks like they're defending the airport at Kubaletti, so. Okay, here we are, ramp start, sitting on the ground in our A-10 Warthog. This is the air base that we're taking off from, around the beautiful city of Batumi. Let's get this thing going, okay. Now we gotta turn on the generators. Turn on our battery power. And over here we turn on our APU. Uncage our backup indicator. Let's close our canopy. On the inverter. What's happening here is the electrical system is turning on. Once that electrical system is going, then we can start up our engines. You can kind of hear it when it's ready to roll. It really winds up. This panel right here, this tells us all of our startup procedures we still have yet to do. start our main APU and uh, once that's done firing up we'll get engine one rolling here. Engine one we use by uncaging our variable throttle here and just putting it in the start position and we'll start to see our engine indicators wind up. Once that engine's rolling we're going to get a warning sign telling us to turn off our APU because we don't need ground power anymore. That means we're running off. Oh, hello. Oh, means we're running off of engine power at that point. Good time to turn on our internal computers. Get some lighting going. Computers take a few seconds to fire up. 
And there's that warning I was telling you about. Let's cut that off. So we don't need the ground power anymore. Okay. Peter's still firing up there. Let's go over here. We'll kick on the other engine as soon as uh, it's completely fired up. I think it is. Okay, engine number two. There we go. That one's firing up there. Turn on our countermeasure system. That also turns on our air warning radar. Now we turn on our multifunction displays. And we give them life by turning on the kick U, our data link, and our IPCC. And that's our computer that runs the HUD. And uh, we'll just skip past the pre-flight, set that all the way to open. This panel here controls our master arm. We'll get that going as soon as we're in the air. Flaps, make sure that they are in takeoff configuration, and they are. Next, we turn off our anti-skid right here because uh, when you're on the ground, you want to turn off anti-skid. Turn on our fuel pumps. And we turn on our SAS, uh, yaw and pitch SAS. What this does is help control the craft when we start for firing our forward gun. That gun can actually kick back so hard that the craft needs to compensate. Over here, this is the digital stores management system. We're going to load all of the information related to the weapons sitting under our wing. Now, when that says four minutes, that means we're fully aligned to satellites and we're aligning and uh, the uh, airport as well. And that just helps us navigate and get us all around wherever we're going. <clears throat> all right. What else are we missing? Oh, we got to arm our ejection seat. Turn on our radios. Okay. Pre-flight check, ready to roll. Let's get this thing out on the ramp. We do that just by speeding her up and driving her with our feet, just like that. All right, see you guys out on the ramp. Okay, here we are, ready to ramp start. Looks like, uh, at a quick glance, all of our systems are up and running. And, uh, let's get a quick look at our craft. This is the A-10 Warthog. Right there's my wingman next to me. Look at this ugly zombie. This whole aircraft is built around that rotating gun right there in the nose. That thing is so powerful. Uh, it just creates kind of a rain of molten lead. It can be loaded with armor piercing or high explosive ammo. We'll talk more about that once we get airborne, but first, let's get this sucker rolling. So, we just slowly roll our throttle up to 100%. We're going to wait till we're going about 150, 160 knots before we rotate on the flight stick and take off. Can confirm our flaps or takeoff configuration. And the speed indicator is right there 117, 118, 120. That number going up, that's our knots. So, looks like we are loaded a little heavier in our wingman. We're at about 150. Rotate, and we are off the ground. Just barely. You can tell this thing doesn't want to do it. It's got so many bombs on it. Gears up. And as we take off, we adjust our trim. Uh, you want the uh, craft to fly itself level wherever you point it. And the best way to do that after take out and off is adjusting your, your trim. You'll have to do this constantly throughout a flight. And the way I do that is just this button right here on the flight stick. If I leave the flight stick steady and it starts... Looks like we've got a, a rightward list, so I'll adjust the trim to the left until it stops doing that. Now, now it looks like it's going straight. 
And uh, looking at some of the communications coming from our team, we've got a CAD strike holding on station, ready for tasking. What CAD stands for is uh, uh, something about air defenses, taking out, uh, seek and destroy air defenses, something to that effect. I like to think of it as stupid easy auto death because really, once you call in a CAD strike, it's just your aircraft offshore and your long range missiles that fly in to destroy the enemy's air defenses. Here's my wingman. Where are you going, one, two? He's trying to get back in formation. Uh, I'm a little off of the flight plan there. You see those green straight lines? That's where I'm supposed to head, but I wanted to turn in a little sooner, give you guys a view of Batumi and Kubaletti and the mountains. Oh, I can't see a thing flying into the sun. We'll turn it off a little bit here. <clears throat> okay. Cap holding on station, ready for tasking. That is a combat air patrol. Those are F-16s that you see up there. Sometimes you get F-18s and F-15s. What they're doing is patrolling for other enemy aircraft that'll be coming out of the north way over there. So if we see them on our radar here, if we start getting warnings about them, we will call in the combat air patrol. First thing I want to do is get my weapon systems fired up. Master arm, laser arm. And you'll notice I have to immediately, once I get that master arm going, I gotta reset my trim because the, uh, the gun system starts going again. And when the gun system goes, it actually throws off the weight of your vehicle. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Uh, we have a targeting pod here, not timed out, so once that's timed out, we'll have a video feed from what the targeting pod is looking at, and our Maverick missiles have their own targeting, so we'll get those turned on and let them align. they got a countdown timer there. Uh, once that hits about two to three minutes, then they are aligned and ready to shoot. We'll go back to our CDU, Combat Defense Unit, or something to that effect. This helps us find where we're going helps us navigate. <clears throat> we'll set that to a lat long screen so we can start getting information from our uh, controllers, the AWACS, the Air Warning and Control System. But we want to be set to a UTM setting, not lat and long. I like UTM better. Uniform something something. Man, the military's got so many, so many acronyms and names for stuff. Take a little joyride. See what we can see. Combatter strike. Cass. Holding station. Okay. So it looks like our team is all lined up. I'm going to start calling in that CAD. So I bring up my communication. Press F10. CL. Fire. Now pretty soon we're going to start to see missiles fly out from our team headed towards the enemy air defenses. I'm particularly vulnerable to air defense because A-10s fly low and slow. They're designed to take out armor and other targets like that. They can definitely do wild weasel anti-air defense with their AGM missiles, but always better if you can get a cruise missile off the coast to handle that for you. This is our weapon store system, or digital stores management system rather, the DSMS. You can see on our stations, we've got the CVU-97s, the CVU-105s, and the AGM-65Ds. Those are all our weapons, as well as the AIM-9 down there. But like I said, those are air-to-air. -air. I don't think we'll be getting any air-to-air uh, -air scraps. I'm also going to tell my wingman to engage with air defenses with his missiles, the default. Location, uh, we do not want to be dealing with air defense when we go in to get our target. Okay, let's go ahead and arm our AGM-65Es. Those are our long-range missiles. And we're going to do what we can to take out air defenses on our way in. Let's see if we have them aligned yet. We're targeting the pod, so it's air to ground. And there we go. Now, with this control over here, I set that multifunction display, the MFD, to my sensor point of interest. I'm going to set that to, uh, there we go, I like that view a little better. Well, you can tell it's a sensor point of interest because it's got that green box around it. And uh, 
now we get to slew. Uh oh. Or tally. Triple A at bullseye. One seven twenty for four hundred. I'll explain to you what all that means in a second. Before we get in too deep past the front line, there's all our friendly units in blue and all the enemy units you can see through my craft. You can see their text in red. There's a Sam over there and a ZSU, a Shilka, AAA emplacements. Yeah, we don't want to fly over that just yet. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set us on a rotating flight path here. Set the trim. And uh, autopilot. On, uh, uh oh. Uh oh, missiles in the air. One fun way to look at missiles, we just press F6. Uh oh, we're losing these middles. And we can watch these suckers roll in. Where's he headed? Right for that sand. This is an AGM fired probably from my wingman. Let's see what other missiles are in the air. So that's a cruise missile shot from off the shore, and it looks like over there, there's a little dogfight going on, so I'm gonna call in that combat air patrol. Call in the cap, and the CAS. And then we're gonna swing back around and start picking some targets of our own. Look at that beautiful water. Beautiful day to reassert American dominance. Little known fact, the A-10 Warthog runs on a special mix of gasoline and baby seal blood. So these things are not cheap to keep in the air. Look at it though. Big, ugly. That's how I like it. Ooh. Yep. Okay. We're gonna swing back around and start lining up some shots. Now, like I said, this craft is built around that gun in the front. That thing right there, that mean looking rotating gun. And that thing is so powerful that the AT actually comes with a system called the SAS. It's controlled to those four switches there. And what those four are right there. And what those ones do is, uh, when you start firing the gun, it actually is sort of, it acts like a retro rocket. It's so powerful, it pushes your craft backwards and pushes your nose upwards. So, in order to compensate for that, the A-10 automatically realizes that you're spinning up the barrel and you're getting ready to shoot, and uh, it needs to compensate for that. So, when I say the craft is designed around that gun, that's what I mean. I'm flying on top of the gun, and it just happens to carry missiles with it, so... A-10 is a beast. So you're seeing some conversation coming from the AWACS and from some of the other flights up in the air. Colt 1 in from the northwest engaging armor at Bulls 117 for 400. So Colt 1 is his call sign. And uh, if he says he's engaging armor at Bulls 117 for 400, he means that's 117 miles or 117 degrees from the bullseye that we set pre-mission for 400 miles out. Okay, so they're engaging SAM sites and SAM sites of surface to air missiles. If you notice in my display there, the little X's, those are friendly indicators. That means don't shoot at them. Those are the good guys. Craft up ahead. Hopefully that's a good guy. If it ain't, he's gonna shoot at me, and we don't like that. Alright, look at my heads-up display here. You see that little diamond that's moving around? I'm controlling that with my finger on the throttle button. And that's how I find targets on the ground. You'll notice it moves along with my camera view. So we're gonna start doing some searching for some bad guys. And that Beeping means there's a missile in the air. Hopefully, looks like uh, it's my own guy shooting missiles. That's good. 
Don't want to be in the business end of those. Oh yeah, they're rocking a few missiles off. There's probably some anti-air over there. Yeah, you can see the missiles flying up from the anti-air, and you can see uh, friendly missiles shooting back at it. Wow, real mess of missiles over here. That's what I call a dick fight. <clears throat> Okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna get this guy doing some triple A here. A lot of A-10s over there killing those triple A. You can kind of just look for the missiles flying up to see where the bad guys are shooting you from. Do not want to catch those. Here's this guy. Looks like our target. Let's let's take him. It can be kind of hard to find these guys right away. He's got a... There he is. There he is. That looks like a triple A. That's our Huckleberry. Lock him in. AGM's loaded. Go over to the Maverick. We slew the Maverick camera to our target. There it is. Beautiful. Now we are locked. And we fire. There it goes. Off the rail. And I'm just going to roll back around and then we'll watch that sucker roll in. And get our first kill of the day. It is really that easy. Disturbing how easy it is. And there's our AGM. Flying in on that AAA ZSU. Now the ZSU is basically just machine guns that shoot into the air. Dead. Gotcha, bitch. So he won't be bothering us when we go in for our final attack run. We use this time to find a few more targets. Another AAA. Boy, look at all those friendlies in the air flying around giving these ground targets hell. In the far distance there, I think that's our target. That is the that is the command and control we gotta worry about. We're gonna drop some CBUs on them. Cluster bomb units. It's so handy, you can control all your cameras right from uh, your control surfaces on the throttle and flight sticks, so. Just gonna do another little circle around. You never wanna get too close when you're doing wild weasel anti-air, uh, anti-air defenses stuff because they're designed to shoot you down. The only real advantage you have over them is standoff tactics, engaging from a distance, and bugging out before they can really get a lock on you. It's less than honorable, but you know what? We're here to preserve billions of dollars of military hardware. We're not worried about honor right now. Okay. Alright, what do we have here? It looks like a potential target. Slew it in. There we are. There it is, they can be a little hard to see right away from this distance, but that's another ZSU looks like. Yes it is. Alright, that's our target. Slew our Maverick to it. It's taking a while. And we lock it up. And we fire. Fox 2. We want to stay away from those shilkas, man. They are mean boy. They come with guns and missiles. There's our AGM rolling in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cucked him. All right. Maybe we should start thinking about hitting our primary target here. We're doing a real number on those anti-air emplacements. Man, though. I would not want to be on the business end of the American Air Force. Okay, we're flying in. Uh, another attack pass here. <clears throat> now, our main target is way out there. That square with the line coming out of it, that is our main target. That's waypoint 4 HQ. And so, it looks like there's some enemies between us and them. They're probably not going to be too much trouble. 
probably tank columns. They can't reach us too high up here, but maybe we can get one of these guys before we roll in. Go back to heat vision. Yeah, let's see here if we can find him. There he is. There he is. He's trying to hide out. Zoom in. Yeah, that's a tank. T-72. Main battle tank. Okay, we've got him as our main sensor point of interest. So we go over to our Maverick camera and we lock the Maverick camera down to the main sensor point of interest. Zoom that sucker in. It sees it and it is locked. You see that uh, kind of shaky line there? Now it's totally locked and we fire. Missile away and that thing is good as dead. <clears throat> We still got targets. We are on the move. Oscar Mike. Okay. So we're going to want to land it a little bit in front of them. But it's also good that they're moving. That means their engines are hot. Now these CBUs are crazy. They shoot out uh, a single bomb that breaks into a number of clusters. And then those clusters, right before they land, they shoot themselves straight up into the air and uh, they start spinning really quickly and as they spin they protrude little cameras that just look for heat sources and then they superheat slugs of copper hidden within them and they shoot these superheated slugs of copper at whatever heat sources they see these are not explosive slugs but they go so fast and so hot that they shear right through all tank armors definitely shear through engine blocks they rattle around in whatever cab they end up in they kill everything they see I'm not even sure these weapons are still legal, uh, but they are mean mamma jammas. You do not want to be in the business end of this thing. And the way that our heads-up display is working here is you see that circle above our flight indicator there? That's going to start dropping, and when that hits the middle of that big circle down there, that's when we release our bombs. That is the constantly calculated release point, or CCRP. So we're just going to keep following this column we're going to try and lead it because, see that countdown there? It's dropping. We want to be a little centered when it hits. Two, one, and drop. Okay, hopefully that drops fast enough to do some good. Let's put ourselves on a rotating autopilot. And watch what happens. Okay, there's the CBU. I mean, if this thing hits, I will be impressed. I doubt it will, but let's see what happens. No, they're already way off course. Wind must have taken it. But you can see the little bomblets there, and then when those get close to the ground, they shoot up, and they release those molten copper cores. Since this target's on the move, and it's already BTFO'd out of our range, I think I screwed that up. I think we got to give them just a good old-fashioned gun run. So we'll pick our... Guns, the thing the A-10 was really designed to excel at, and we're going to go in and give them a strafing run that they just don't know what's about to hit them. <clears throat> and then we'll use a, a cluster munition on the artillery unit set up over there, because they aren't moving. Oh, you silly, silly gooses, you have no idea what's coming down the pike. Now. As we come in, we reduce our speed, and we put out our air brakes, because we don't want to go too fast into this. So if we get another C out on station, we don't really need them. Oh my god, look at that. It's just so beautifully lined up. Here we go. Bert, 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 dead. Dead, dead, see ya. <laughs> uh, air brakes down. Uh, MI-24 over there, that's actually a helicopter sitting on a pad or maybe rotating. Now, that could be a little dangerous. They've got some air-to-air -air capability. I'm going to stay out of his range just a little bit longer. 
We'll do another pass on our targets over there, see if they're still alive. Come around, make sure that job gets done. Ah, it's a beautiful day to rain molten hell. <clears throat> Oh yeah, he got off the road. Smart. Not smart enough. I can still see you. Burt, burt, you're dead. <laughs> okay, it's time for some, some cluster bomb unit fun. We're gonna go with the 105s. Oh, we're a little more guided, I think. Alright. Mission success, so that's what we needed to kill. Okay, so we're gonna have a little bit more fun. Alright. And there's the artillery units. Oh yeah, perfect. Perfect for cluster bomb. We'll put them kind of right between these two guys, see how it goes. Uh, we're going to want a little bit more altitude, so let's pass these guys and turn back around on them. <clears throat> okay, we're at about 9,000 feet. I'm going to start turning around, lining up for this bomb run. We'll watch these CBUs in action. They really are mean. And uh, the closer together your enemy vehicles are, the more effective these cluster bomb units are. Seems to make just general sense. But uh, that's why we're looking for these clusters of vehicles like this. And let's see if we can get two or three kills. We'll shoot right in the center of all these. I think the most I've ever seen taken out is six at once, but... These guys are pretty spread out. They know what's coming. All right, we're gonna level off at about just under 10,000 feet there. We're gonna line up our bombing reticle. Right on the line. Oh yeah, well this is gonna be ugly. Just about to cross 10,000 feet. 10,000, all right. <clears throat> now we just want to keep it steady and smooth on our way in here. And uh, we'll be getting a bunch of indicators telling us when to drop that bomb. Now this one's just a little bit different. You'll see on the circle down there, there's a picker that's gonna start running counterclockwise around the circle and when it gets between those two triangles that's when you want to release your bomb. So it's another constantly calculated release point. Let's make sure we're still in yeah, target. And as we get closer you'll see those triangles start to separate a little bit more. We just want to keep this line centered until we see that pipper start to go counterclockwise. Keep an eye on this thing. And right when that triangle hits the top, get that counterclockwise. I'm going to let it get centered a little bit more. And we have dropped a bomb. Okay, we'll put it on autopilot and we'll watch that sucker roll in. So there's a CBU. Pretty good on target here. Now there's the clusters.
Now the wind's blowing them off course just a little bit. Hopefully when they shoot back up, they will be able to, there they go, shooting back up, losing, and shooting off those uh, copper clusters. Got one, got one, got one, got one. Look at them go, holy cow. That was a good run. That was a good run. We got at least three of them. Oh, they did not like that. Woo! Okay. <clears throat> Love it. Alright, we're gonna give the rest of them the guns. Turning a little hard here. We're lined up well, so. We'll get rid of these. I'm sure this artillery is giving our guys on the ground hell. And we will roll back our throttle, turn on our air brakes. We do not want to be going too fast because we got to pull up pretty quick. But at the same time, we don't want to be going too slow because if they have guns mounted, they can start shooting at you. And a little closer, a little closer. Bert, 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 Bert. Bert. Dead. And dead. Okay. I think they've got him. That's a good run. Let's call it a day. Oh, there's an APC. Let's kill him, too. Pull up. Pull up. Oh, yeah, they're exploding. They're blowing up. Gotcha. Sometimes it takes a few seconds after you kill them for them to blow up and the game to recognize that they're actually dead. That's very satisfying. Alright, that APC, they're a little mean. They got machine guns that can shoot us out of the sky. But I got machine guns that can shoot them into the next dimension. Oh, see? Incoming fire. Oh, oh, we caught it. We caught it. We caught a bullet. Are we damaged? Not too bad. Not too bad. I think we'll make it home. That APC is dead. Okay. Alright. I think we've had our fun for today. We are going to get over the water, eject what's left of our bombs so that we can land free and clear. Okay. Get rid of our weapons. All the bombs fall away, because we don't need those to land. Um, now normally on a mission you'd land with whatever ordinance you had dropped, but I'm not saving the taxpayers any money today. I mean, we're just printing dollars, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. Well, we're flying to Batumi. Let's see what their information is as far as our landing. Batumi. Runway 13, so that's basically the heading. So that's 130. So 130, that's the direction the airport is facing. So when we make our final turn in, you can see down here that arrow pointing left, that's going to be the direction we face. Now their ILS radar is on frequency 110.3, so we can come over here to ILS, 110, 30, turn that on. And tack in is 16, okay. What those radars do is just talk to us as we come in <clears throat> to land and lets us know we're way off course. And then we put our navigation system onto ILS, which is International Landing System. Now our plane can talk to the air traffic controller and tell us if anything's wrong. Um, now this ILS system is great if you're landing in terrible weather, but 
you can usually eyeball these things if you've done enough landings. We gotta get our speed down though. We're going a little fast at 330, so we'll put some air brakes out. Pull up, pull up. And when our speed drops enough, we'll drop our landing gear and our flaps. Looks like we're on course. That's good. The idea behind the ILS is that you could land a plane without seeing a thing. You could do it all from your instruments. We've bled enough speed there. Landing gear down. Landing flaps. We'll drop as soon as we bleed a little more speed. And we get rid of our air brakes because we don't want to lose it that fast. There goes our flaps. And we just line up right there on the airport. I'm going a little slow. Make sure our gear's down. There we go. Oh yeah, gear down. Okay. You just make it a nice, easy glide on your way in. It's a little annoying not being able to see your hub with the uh, indicators there. Ground units, but that's okay. We got this. Come a little fast. Give it some air brake in these final moments. And keep the nose up. Final flare. Nope. Oh. And we're down. And then we hit our wheel brakes. Wheel brake. And we're good. Pretty smooth, I guess. Not my smoothest landing, but. Uh, Anyone you can walk away from, right? <clears throat> All right, full stop. Okay, guys, that was the DCS A10 Warthog Digital Combat Simulator. Uh, I had some fun getting the AGMs off the rail, getting some gunning done, and I hope you had some fun watching me and. If you guys like this, I'll do a few more of these. I got a lot of different VR experiences, but I really like doing those flight sims. So let me know what you think, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.